All right, so we've created our scatter plot. We've calculated our correlation coefficient. We have a strong or maybe moderate linear relationship. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the least squares regression line, which is a linear equation that summarizes the relationship in our data set. And we're going to use that to make predictions for numbers that are not in the data set. So the least squares regression line follows the general form y hat equals ax plus b. So this little guy on top of the y here, that's read as y hat. And that's a way for us to be able to tell that this is a model from a data set that we're using to make predictions. Not everyone puts the little hat on it. Some people just say y equals. Okay, um, and then the a here, this also, depending on where you're looking, you might see this notated as b0 or b0 or b0. Those are all different ways to say this guy. And whether it's the A or the B, this is giving us the slope of the line. So if you recall, slope tells you how fast the line is increasing in a positive relationship or decreasing in a negative relationship. And your slope is always going to be next to the X. The X represents our explanatory variable that changes. And then here we have plus B. So this is sometimes notated as B1. And this is telling us where the y-intercept is. So the least squares regression line is y hat equals ax plus B, where A is the slope and B is the y-intercept. So to find the values of A and B for a data set, there are formulas, but we're going to go ahead and let technology do those calculations for us because the formulas can get kind of funky. Okay, so I do have a video showing you how to use Excel to find those values. So once we have a regression line, we can use it to make predictions for data values that were not in the data set. So here we have um, the equation to model the relationship between the number of hours a student studied for exam and the score they received is y hat equals 5.43x plus 76.4. So this is our slope and this is our y-intercept. And we're going to use this equation to make some predictions about what score a student would get based on how long they studied for the exam. So first one, predict the score that a student would receive if they studied for 2.5 hours. So the student is studying for 2.5 hours. So we're going to plug in 2.5 for x. So y hat equals 5.43 times 2.5 plus 76.4. And I don't know what that answer is. I have to actually calculate it real quick. And I got 89.97. Or 89.98 depending on how we're rounding that. Okay so based off this relationship that we saw we had a data set of test scores and hours that students studied. This predicts that if a student studied for 2.5 hours for 2.5 hours they could expect to get an 89.975 on their exam. 
Now this value that we found, this 89.975, this is not a guarantee, okay? This is an average for students that study 2.5 hours. But we can use that to predict for our student. But on average, students that are studying 2.5 hours, they're scoring about a 90, just under a 90% on this exam. So what if a student studied for 1.75 hours? What would they see on the exam? So we're going to do the same thing. But now we're going to plug in 1.75 for the X. So we do this again. We plug in 1.75. And now this student who's only who just bleh, this student who studied for 1.75 hours, they're scoring an 85.9025 or an 85.9 on their exam. So this is how once you use the technology to find the slope and the y-intercept, it gives you an equation like this one here. And then you can use that equation to make predictions. One word of caution though, you want to be careful about the x values you're plugging in to this equation. There's something called extrapolation and that occurs when you're making predictions for x values that are not within the original range of data values you were looking at. So if we have here with this data set, let's say our original data set contained people that studied for zero hours all the way up to four hours. We would not want to predict the score for somebody who studied six hours because six hours is outside of that range of zero to four. When you do that, if I were to predict for six hours, this could lead to very inaccurate results. And the reason for that is once we get past four hours, we don't know how this pattern continues. Okay, it looks linear, but then it might change drastically on us after we pass four hours of studying. Maybe it's burnout. And all of a sudden, someone who scores, who studies for six hours, they actually start getting really low scores because they've burnt out. We don't know what happens to those students because we did not include those values in the original data set. So you just want to be careful about what types of values you're making predictions for. Okay, so this is how, this is what the least squares regression line looks like and how you can use it to make predictions for values that were not included in your data set but we're still within that original 